What's up, everybody? Welcome to, I would call this, a special edition of the Athlete Interview Series presented by USANA. I sat down with my good buddy, Nick Mayhew, who just took the Paralympics by storm, winning four medals and breaking several world records. This was an awesome interview. Hope you enjoy it. Sweet, dude. Oh, yeah. How's it going, buddy? Look at that. I'm good, man. How are you? Well, just recovering from from that trip. <laughs> yeah, how you feeling? <laughs> what did you what did you think about that, man? I loved it, man. It was so much fun. It was a it was a good uh good did reset. You have a good time? Exactly what I needed. Yeah, man, it was so much fun. It was good. It was it's cool to kind of get that experience, meet everybody, all the associates and everyone, but you know, hang out with you and, and meet all the directors and you know, people that work behind the scenes. It's it was fun though. I had a lot of fun. How was your trip back home? It was pretty easy. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it was pretty easy. We, uh, yeah. They uh, they saw my USA stuff, so they were asking me some questions, and then the the flight attendants asked to see the medals, so I had showed them the medals, and then the pilots, and and uh, my medal got passed around the aircraft again. So that was fun. But we got all four. We got all four. That's all that matters. So, so did it get? That's good. That's good. Did it get passed around um, with just the staff, the airline staff, or were there also people no, on the plane? Like that, a bunch of yeah. Did it get passed around to everybody? Not everybody, but oh some people God. were. Some people Does were. That freak you out a little some, bit. A little bit, but uh, you know, I, I feel. I mean, as long. I mean, we're in a plane, so there, nobody's getting off unless I have a medal. So it's all good. I wasn't. I wasn't worried about yeah. it. So. Um, Alex Kopach, my good buddy, Alex, Mm -hmm. who won a gold medal in Korea. Mm -hmm. I told you about the time that somebody dropped his medal and bent it. But Mm -hmm. the other thing I didn't tell you is that thing got passed around so much that the ribbon, um, that goes around your neck got Mm -hmm. hammered. Oh yeah. And, uh, he had to get a new one because it was silk and yeah, it it didn't, uh, didn't hold up very well. Yeah, I haven't seen. I've seen a little bit of the like the wear and tear already. But what you need to do is just take one of them, put it away, and never pull that one out. Mm-hmm. And you always have a fresh one. <laughs> sure, your kids, for the special people that come over, you know, yeah, your nieces, nephews. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> nice. Well, dude, thanks for taking the time. I don't want to take up. Too much of your time, Um, but like we talked in Mexico, I thought it'd be really cool to do a quick little interview with you. Um, We've already we already did a Facebook Live. You're one of the first ones Mm -hmm. I did, which was amazing. That's how I I I feel like I really got to know you during that interview. That was awesome. But you're a different man now. I mean, you know, you were talking about your goals and aspirations in the last. Facebook Live that we did um, when we were doing them on Facebook. So that was a while ago. And now all that came true. So I I mean, I think it's amazing. First of all, I think it's amazing because you're a great friend. And, and, I, and I loved watching you break the world records, get the medals. But it's also amazing because you had a goal you, you, you set that goal. Um, you told people what you were going to do, not what you wanted to do. And I thought that was cool. It was something we discussed with, with a, lot of the, um, uh, a lot of the people that attended the, the, the Mexico trip. Um, but, yeah, let's, let's walk through that a little bit. Let's walk through, yeah. through the Olympics because I think that's something that a lot of people don't understand the, everything that goes into it. I mean, first of all, You know, everybody, most people probably know all the training you did, all the, Mm -hmm. you know, all the sacrifices, all that to to get to where you, uh, to where you got. But what was it like actually hopping on a plane to go over to Tokyo? What were those feelings when you landed and that, and that whole process? Yeah, I mean, it was I, I tried to control as much of it as I could. And that's one of the things that I learned along this process is that 
one, I was completely new in this environment, in this world of track and field and the Olympics and that entire realm of elite sport. And so knowing that, um, you know, having the experience of playing with the national team, having the experience of going to international tournaments and playing in those and meddling and, and having, you know, that elite experience, but, you know, that's sort of to a certain extent, you know, and then when you go to the Olympics and you're, you know, you're there for this sport and you represent your country at the Olympics or the Paralympics and it's at that level, it's a completely different world. And, you know, so I took what I learned from playing soccer within the national team and everything and really tried to apply it to my trip to Tokyo and sort of looked at it and understood that it was a business trip. You know, it was obviously there weren't there weren't fans. The environment was a little different, which made it easier to really lock in. And, you know, my, my family and my friends and my coaches, my personal coaches back home weren't able to come. So it was it really allowed me to really, you know, go at it at a different angle from a different perspective uh, as a professional. And, you know, so I tried to, you know, getting on the plane and, you know, not even looking at my phone, not even looking at, you know, the schedule to everything and just kind of just enjoying that travel, you know, having it be a 13 hour flight, um, you know, enjoying that and understanding what that is and then getting to Tokyo and then seeing, you know, getting off the plane, seeing all the volunteers, seeing the Tokyo 2020 advertisements and the signs and, you know, all of that. And then, the, you know, you just try to control the way you feel. And it's a, it's an overwhelming amount of every emotion that you could think of, you know, just excitement, nervousness, and, you know, just kind of scared a little bit of like the uncertainty of what is going to happen in the next, you know, month. So, and, you know, you, you I worked nonstop for the last 18 months to, you know, put my, you know, my word and my body on the line for the next, you know, the next month. So it was, it was completely unknown. Um, but, you know, I kind of went at it in the, in the aspect of trying to control personally, you know, my mindset, the way that I felt and my emotions going into it. Because if I went in it, you know, the way that I handled soccer stuff, me knowing that I was at the top of my game, me knowing that, um, you know, I, I consider myself one of the best um, soccer players in the world within Paralympic sport and kind of going at it with that confidence, it wouldn't have worked um, in track and field because I wasn't that person. You know, I came in and I said it in a couple of the NBC interviews, I came in with nobody knowing my name, nobody respecting me on the on the on the track. And when I leave, everybody's going to know my name and everybody's going to respect me. And so I just came in with the underdog mentality, the underdog mindset, and, you know, just tried to take a step back and then let my, you know, let my performances speak for themselves. So what was that like the first race? Cause I've, I've got to imagine, um, going into it, you were probably feeling pretty comp- confident because at the Olympic trials, which was your first international race to qualify mm-hmm. for the Paralympics, mm-hmm. you, uh, you broke the world record. So I'm assuming you went in pretty, pretty confident. Um, mm-hmm. but was, was there still nerves at that, uh, on, on the, the starting block? Wow. Oh, absolutely, man. I mean, cause if you walk, you walk into that stadium and it, it was the biggest stadium I'd ever been in. I'd ever competed in and, you know, to walk onto that track and that's what, that's what really, oh, I mean, it was just something that I couldn't even really imagine and really prepare for. I couldn't really visualize like playing soccer and growing up playing and playing soccer and then going into a stadium. I I have done that so many times, but this being my first event, I couldn't really visualize myself walking into the stadium, walking onto the track, getting into the blocks, the cadence of the gun and, and the officials and all the other athletes. So many things were out of my control and I couldn't, I'm a very visualized, visualized um, I'm a very visual person. I visualize a lot of stuff. I, I'm um, very spiritual and meditation, visualization and manifestation. All of that stuff is, it, it plays a key part into my professional career. And, you know, going into it as blind as I was to the experience of what that would be. I mean, I was just had so much adrenaline, so much anxiety kind of going into it. Not, not to the extent where I couldn't perform, but just like, just the unknowingness of, you know, what was going to happen. And so, you know, walking out of that track, it was just, 
I just locked in and I, I honestly don't even remember getting to the box. I don't remember, you know, the race. I don't remember the gun, anything. All I can remember is getting in. And the one thing that I always do before, when I get into the box or when I'm standing there, I'm getting ready to hear the on your mark call is if you go back and look at it, you can see the camera pan over and you can see me and I'm just mouthing to myself and saying to myself out loud, I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best. And it's just like positive affirmation and just something that I always do before I get in the box to kind of really pump myself up and really positively try to reinforce myself to then be able to go and, and do what I did. And knowing that, you know, I, I, de I definitely was capable of running the times that I wanted to run and doing what I did. I, I knew that I could do that. Um, but actually, you know, saying one thing and then, you know, getting down on the blocks and actually doing it is completely two different things. So was is there a special moment um, that, that you're going to, cause I'm sure there was a lot of moments, right? The Paralympics mm -hmm. um, that you're going to remember forever, but is mm -hmm. there a particular one that, that, that when you think back, it's the first, maybe the, the, the first thing that pops in your mind? Not, not, not one that uh, honestly, I mean, probably, probably me screaming, across the line and you know looking at the clock with 20 meters still left kind of doing that and just because I had I didn't want you know I didn't I didn't plan on doing that I didn't you know that I didn't really understand <laughs> I didn't really know what I was going to do and then as soon as I did it and felt how fast I was felt you know I just felt so much better than I thought I was going to and I had never felt that fast before and there's actually, it's funny because the, I spoke to my coach after I ran a couple of these races uh, of the 100, after I finished the 100, um, the, one of the first 100s that I ran, I actually, uh, it was at a, at High Point University in North Carolina and it was an open division one university yeah. meet amongst other division one athletes that run track and field and have been doing it their entire life. You know, I just threw myself in there just to get the experience of a competitive meet. And I remember getting out of the box really well, running really fast. And towards the end of the race, you can tell that I'm not used to running that fast because I start to fall over. And then I, I like start to fall over and kind of fight it and stand back up. And it messed up my race. And I ran slower because of it, because I fought it. And, you know, and it's funny because after I ran the 100, after I broke the world record and run it as fast as I'd ever ran in a race, my coach you know, one of the things we spoke on was, you know, it's funny how I didn't even fight it. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't falling over. I wasn't trying to run faster. I just like let myself go and let my, and just trusted my body, um, you know, and everything. So that's probably, it surprised me. And that's why I kind of like was, I knew I, knew, I could obviously see that I was out in front. I knew I was out in front. I knew I was going to run the race, but I just didn't know how fast I was going to run. So then that's when I pan over and look at the clock and I'm staring at the clock for the last, like, 15 meters just looking at it and knowing that I broke my own world record, knowing I had won and then just like screaming, just, Oh my God, it felt so good, man. It was, that was fun. Yeah. And then, uh, that last gold that you got, um, that one, you know, we had talked in Mexico, that one was pretty emotional for you, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And then, you know, that, I spoke to my brother about it and that's the reason why I was so emotional is because, you know, my brother is one of my coaches. He's been, you know, with me uh, every single day along this whole process. And um, that one was definitely a special one. One, because it was the 200 and it's something that, you know, my coach and, and Thomas uh, like knew that was probably going to be my best race. And they knew that I was probably going to run the fastest in that race, considering the certain times and what I was going to run. And then, you know, it, it's the one that, you know, I struggled with the most, you know, I, I couldn't really, um, I couldn't really break that barrier that I wanted to that 22, I couldn't get under 22. Um, and I really wanted to And, and uh, the night before um, Thomas, we were on a FaceTime call and with my family and he and he said, you know, you're gonna you're gonna run 21 nine. And then I ended up running 21 nine. And so you know, to run to, to win that race, knowing, you know, the the you know, my hamstring was about to go. I definitely wasn't a hundred percent going into yeah. that race knowing my hand. I, I could have gotten injured and just saying, you know, F it, let's go. Just putting a hundred percent into it. It's your last race of, of the time. And just kind of just for have the whole competition come full circle, you know, to realize how much work I'd really put in 
how much worked my brother and how much time my brother sacrificed for me to get to where I was, knowing that he wasn't there. Um, and, you know, then going out and performing and, and running as fast as I did, winning and breaking the world record again and having it be the last, the fourth event of, of four events, you know, to cap it off with the world record, with the gold medal and knowing that that was a, a sigh of relief, you know, to then yeah. to then look up the clock and realize that I ran 21.9 and then realize that my brother was the one that said I was going to do that. You know, it was it was a lot. And it's just I just allowed myself to just feel it all, you know, and just just trying to take it all in. And it just, it was overwhelming for sure. But God, I was like, oh, that was awesome. Yeah, that was that was definitely probably the best moment of it all. And, and it was it was fun watching. And it, it felt like when I watched the interview live after after you'd won it, to me, it also felt like maybe there was some weight lifted off your shoulders. You went there to accomplish something. You did. That was the last step. And it just, it seemed like that was the time that you you did kind of let go and, and, and just, you know, let everything, let everything yeah. go. That was definitely, yeah, that was definitely the moment where it kind of just, initially hit me that you know i was done and i did it and you know when i when i looked into the camera and i said i was speaking directly to my brother and i said you know we did it you know i'm coming home and that was kind of the moment that i realized that you know that the amount of time that we put in together to get here you know the how close we got to just quitting uh how close i got to just quitting and just trying not to do it and you know, it, it just really goes to show that if you put in the work to do what you, you know, you set out to do and how good it feels when you actually do it, you know, and, and, you know, I talked a lot and I, I, I set myself up to, you know, do extraordinary things that had never been done before. And, you know, that's just the type of athlete I am. I want to continue to try to push myself to certain limits that no one has ever gotten to. And, you know, I have never been at physically and mentally and emotionally and you know to really push yourself to that extent uh, there there's very few people that can really wrap their head and understand that and you know that was there's just a very emotional emotional moment of realization that you know i i put all this work in i did it we're done you know so uh, sigh of relief but a good sigh of relief not a bad one when did it actually sink in? I mean, you put in those four medals around your neck. Like, has it sunk in yet? When was that moment where it, where it really, you're like, wow, this is, this is not a dream. This actually happened. It hasn't, it hasn't hit me yet, you know? And I think it, it really hasn't. I haven't really had that moment to where I'm like, you know, that, uh, that big gasp or that big, you know, that big breath. And then I'm like, damn, like I, like that, I really did that. I really, you know, came home with like, did all the things. And I mean, if you, I, I'm never going to list them out and be like, Oh, I, you know, I'm never going to have that moment just cause that's not the type of person that I am. But you know, that that's all for the media and for other, for team USA and, you know, the fans and everybody to be like, you know, you should be happy. You did all this. And I am, you know, but it's very, I think because I came at it at a different approach that I had other stuff. I think because I, I spoke about it so much to myself, you know, the first thing that I did was look up the world records and write them on a piece of paper in big Sharpie and tape them on every single wall of my house. And it's the things that I would look at every single day. It was things that I would, you know, focus on when I was training and, you know, the things that I had already been speaking into existence and I sort of expected all of this to happen. And that's why I don't think that I really had an, an aha moment or, you know, a big realization moment because I expected this to happen. You know, I, I, I really believed that I was going to do what I did. And I don't think, I think that there definitely will be a time that I'm going to be like, what, like, and just kind of like, be happy for myself, you know, and be proud that I did what I did, but yeah, externally, you know, but I think, I mean, internally it's, it's all there. And I just am very comfortable and I'm very accepting of all of the, everything that happened. So it's just everything that is else to come. It, that's, that's for everybody else. So I'm good. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, that you bring up a good point, and I've had a handful of conversations uh, with you over the last year, year and a half. Um, and, and it's interesting cause you always believed in yourself. Like you went in there knowing what you were going to do. So mm-hmm. it, it makes sense that it wasn't a shock to you. Um, you know, maybe a relief, but definitely, definitely not a shock. Uh, mm-hmm. whereas to everybody else watching it, man, you put on a show, put on a show that, that outside of your, outside of your close circle, nobody expected. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. And that's, and that's, that's kind of something that I've come to realize too. It's a, what I did is, you know, was considered to be impossible, you know, by a lot of people. And, and I always like use that as fuel and use that as like motivation and stuff. And, you know, those, you and those people in my circle and that understand, you know, the way that I work and the way that I talk and everything, you know, and sort of expected it, but you know, it, after when I got home and when I saw like social media um, sort of be the way it was and, you know, people post these things and the amount of stuff people were saying and the amount of stuff people were posting, then it was like kind of like, like, OK, so that, it's it's at this magnitude, you know, like it's that that's kind of crazy, you know, and that's sort of I had that realization. Yeah. But, you know, that was for other people to come to me and be like, dude, like. I had no idea that this was what it could be like, did it? Like, yeah. what? You know, and it was a very, that was the shock factor for, you know, everybody else. But, and it was just kind of like a, told you, uh, you know, that's like a little moment of me being like, <laughs> I, I mean, I told you, you know? Yeah. But thank you. I appreciate that. You know, <laughs> I, 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 I tried to, I tried to put on a show as much as possible, you know, just try to be myself and have fun with it and enjoy it. And, you know, if I put on a show, some people loved it, some people hated it, but can't make everybody happy. Hey, I thought it was amazing. I thought it, I thought it was, I thought it was fantastic. It was, it was just unbelievable. You know, I always tell people, uh, I've, I've got a really cool job because I, I get to meet and hang out with people like you, become really close with people like you, which then changes it for me. Like watching mm-hmm. the Paralympics was completely different for me than it, than it's ever been watching the Olympics before that, just knowing people in it. It's, mm-hmm. you know, I, I can't even imagine how your family felt watching you just, just because <laughs> the nerves that I got, but I mean, I, it had to have been tenfold for your, uh, for your family and speaking to your family, what was that like coming back home from the Olympics and, and or from the Paralympics and then, and, you know, seeing your family? Yeah, that was, that was the, the perfect, uh, you know, cherry on top of it all. And because they, they completely surprised me, you know, I knew, I thought I knew for sure my brother had something planned. I knew he was probably going to do something. Um, and so I was kind of expecting that, but, you know, to go home and, and to, to see, you know, my mom and my dad and, you know, all my cousins and then, you know, some of my friends show up and, and, you know, the amount of fans that were there and really just come home and be able to hug my mom and, you know, hug my dad and, and my stepmom and just hug the people that, you know, were, were there for me and, and have supported me every, every step of the way. And, you know, talk to them after every race and really just get to see them on the phone. But, you know, to come home and, you know, put the medal around my mom and, you know, put a medal around my dad and just see like just the joy in their face and their body. And, you know, just to have them kind of have, have that aha moment of like, like, you know, like, oh, wow, you know, just that was, that was the coolest yeah. part. And that's the, you know, that's why I do it just to be able to, you know, make them proud and, you know, kind of give back to, to everything, all the sacrifices and time and yeah. money, especially that they've put aside for me. And, you know, it's and they're the reason why I do what I do, but to come home and, and to have that was so, so incredible. It was, that was the perfect welcome home. That's awesome. So last thing I'll let you get going. Cause I do appreciate you taking the time. I know you're super busy. You got a lot of people pulling you in, uh, in, in different directions. Um, but where can people go 
to, uh, to, to support you? I mean, I know you've got uh, nickmayhew.com, right? Mm -hmm. Is that, is it right? Is it Nicholas Mayhew or just nickmayhew.com? Nope. Nick, uh, all my social media, everything, my website, my social medias, everything is all the same. It's at Nick Mayhew on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, um, public Snapchat. Um, I recently made one, you know, my website, nickmayhew.com and my shop is now live. So my merchandise, my logo, everything is now um, officially live and available um, for purchase. Um, so yeah, you can find me find me on social media at Nick Mayhew. And um, thank you for your continued support. Thank you, Jason, you know, for being such a great friend and motivator and, uh, you know, somebody just to, to have on my, have in my circle and on my side. I can't tell you enough, man. I appreciate you. So thank you. Hey, we appreciate you. Love supporting yeah. you. Love the friendship. And, uh, and I got to say real quick, that Nick Nick Mayhew shirt that I got, one of my favorite shirts. So anybody watching <laughs> this, go check out his website. Go buy a shirt. Show him some love. Um, but, uh, again, really appreciate, appreciate you taking the time today, Nick. Absolutely, man. Anything for you.